In this video, we're going to solve a problem involving an addition of two vectors by carefully constructing the vector addition on graph paper and then measuring the resultant vector. So here's our problem. We have an airplane which starts at the origin, then the airplane flies 200 miles in a direction 65 degrees north of east. The airplane then flies 300 miles in a direction 15 degrees south of west. We want to know after the airplane has gone through both of those displacements, what are the magnitude and direction of the net displacement? And as I said, we're going to solve this graphically by carefully constructing the situation on graph paper and then measuring the result. So here I have a sketch. This is not the actual solution of the problem, just a rough sketch to illustrate what's going on here. Okay. So first the airplane flies 200 miles in the direction 65 degrees north of east. So what does that mean? Okay, think about the airplane here facing to the east. So from facing to the east, it turns 65 degrees to the north. Okay, that's what 65 degrees north of east, east means. It means you start out facing east and then turn 65 degrees to the north. The airplane flies 200 miles in that direction. Then the airplane goes 300 miles in the direction 15 degrees south of west. Okay, what does that mean? means the airplane starts out facing the west, then turns 15 degrees to the south, and then goes 300 miles in that direction. Okay, So after the airplane has gone 200 miles, 65 degrees north of east, and then 300 miles in the direction 15 degrees south of west, the airplane ends up here. And we want to find what we call the resultant displacement. The resultant displacement is represented by a vector that goes directly from the origin to the final position of the airplane, we want to find the magnitude and direction of this resultant displacement. Okay, so we're gonna construct this nice on graph paper. Okay. So I'm gonna start by drawing my axes. Okay, so I want to draw my axes in such a fashion that everything fits nicely on the page. Put my origin here. Okay, so this is our x-axis, which here also represents the eastern direction. Okay. And this is the y-axis, which also represents the north direction. Okay. The minus y direction will be south. The minus x direction will be west. Okay, now we want to, well, before we can actually draw the vectors, we need to find the scale, okay? In other words, we want to figure out how big does a specific vector get drawn when we put it onto the graph paper, okay? So the scale that I'm gonna use is that one inch is equal to 50 miles. That means that a vector, which is 50 miles long will be drawn as being one inch long on the page, okay? So connecting that to our vectors for this problem, the 200 mile vector will be drawn as four inches long, okay, which would be that much. And the 300 mile vector will be drawn as being six, six inches long, which is that much. And you can see that drawing a four inch vector and a six inch vector onto the space, we're going to use our space nicely, but we're not going to go out of the grid, okay? So when you do these problems on your own, you want to pick scales which allow you to fill the paper pretty nicely without actually going off the grid and drawing on the table. All right, so with that, let's get started. I'm gonna start by drawing the first displacement 
uh, vector of the airplane. Uh, I'm going to find the direction first. So the airplane starts out in the direction 65 degrees north of east. Okay, so we find that direction by first pointing to the east and then turn 65 degrees to the north like that. Now, the way we do that on graph paper, we use a protractor. Okay, so I'm going to line up my protractor so that the crosshairs of the uh, protractor sit at the origin of there. Okay, then I'm going to find 65 degrees. I'm going to put a little mark on the graph paper at 65 degrees. So I have my little mark indicating that 65 degree direction. Now I'm going to come in with a pencil and I'm going to make a light line in here using the origin of that mark. Okay, so this entire light line that I just drew with the pencil is at a direction 65 degrees north of east. I remember, start out facing the east, turn 65 degrees to the north. Okay, now we want to represent the length of that displacement correctly. Okay, so we're representing a 200 mile displacement. Our scale is that an inch equals 50 miles. We're going to draw the vector four inches long. Okay. I'm going to call this. First displacement vector, vector A. Right now I would like to represent that second displacement, 300 miles in the direction 15 degrees south of west. Now, first thing I want to do is copy my east-west axis up to here. I'm going to come up to here and I'm going to copy that east west direction in the light pencil. Okay, so this now is west. So the next displacement is 15 degrees south of west. I'm going to use my protractor. I'm going to put the crosshairs at the tip of vector A. Okay, then I'm going to measure 15 degrees in the direction south of west. Okay, so that's 10 degrees, 20 degrees. So I make my mark here. Okay, then from there, draw a light pencil line. So I know I have that direction represented. Okay. So the airplane is going to fly 300 miles in this direction. Remember that we're using a scale and inch equals 50 miles, which means I'm going to represent that vector on the page by drawing a vector six inches long. So this is 15 degrees in here. The second displacement of the airplane, we'll call that vector B. Okay, so now we want to finish the problem. Remember the problem is to find the magnitude and direction of the net displacement of the airplane. Okay, so that net displacement of the airplane is represented by a vector which goes directly from the point where the airplane started at the origin to the airplane's final position over here. So I'm going to call that vector C. Now, the first thing we can do is measure the direction. And for this, I'm gonna use the protractor again. Okay. So, we have the, I have my crosshairs at the origin, and then starting from here, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, this would be 25 degrees. I'm gonna bring the camera in close so you can see what I'm looking at here. 
Okay, so 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 25 degrees. So that's just about 26 and a half degrees there. Round off to the nearest degree. I'm gonna just call that 26 degrees. That's about as accurately as you can really expect that you're drawing these figures. Okay, so now we want to get the magnitude of the net displacement, which means in other words, that we want to figure out if we look at this vector that goes from the origin to the airplane's final position, what is this distance? Okay, so I can start by just measuring the length of that vector using my ruler. Okay, so what I measure here is 4.6 inches. Okay. So over here to write the answer, I'm going to say that the magnitude of vector C is equal to 4.6 inches, right? But we know that the airplane didn't actually fly 4.6 inches. So I'm going to use my scale here to convert that to the actual uh, displacement of the airplane. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this, in my scale, 50 miles equals an inch. So to cancel out inches, I'll put inch down there, 50 miles up here. Okay, so put that in your calculator or do it in your head. And you'll see that what we get here is 230 miles. So what this graphical solution is telling us is that the net displacement of the airplane is 230 miles. Let's write that out. So the net displacement of the airplane is 230 miles in a direction Okay, so which direction is this? Well, the point at this direction, I would start out facing west and then turn 26 degrees to the north. So this direction here is 26 degrees north of west. Okay, the idea here is that if the airplane wanted to go directly to that ending point, then instead of going through displacement A and then displacement B, the airplane could have gone in a straight line 230 miles long in a direction uh, 26 degrees north of east, and that would take the airplane from the origin directly to the end point. Okay, and in the next video, we're going to solve this exact same problem, except we're going to use trick calculations. And we're gonna see that this result is close to what we get with the trick calculations, but it's probably gonna be a little bit different.